Well, it's carnival season. What better time to introduce masks? Welcome to SETI Astro. So you can either check for updates within SETI Astro Suite itself, or if you've never gotten the program, head over to SETIastro.com under Astro Program, SETI Astro Suite. Be sure to click Get It Here, and it'll take you over to the GitHub repository where you can get the latest version for your operating system. So there's quite a number of updates in uh, version 2.9.4 here. I have geometry functions now for inverting the image, flipping it horizontally, vertically, or rotating it. And then we also have our masks. And you can see this up here too. Here's our geometry and our masks. So let's go over uh, just how to create and, and utilize masks. So masks to me, although are very important for post-processing, uh, almost every program does it differently and it's always confusing. Um, so I, I I'm tried to make it as simple as possible here in SETI Astro Suite. So again, we use slots. Slot zero is our working slot. You can copy anything to anything now. So you can uh, use the copy slot function. It's the two uh, location markers here. You can copy an image to a mask slot or a mask to an image slot or within images. Uh, so that's that'll be utilized in here to, to move things around. So you have slots which are for images and then masks have their own set of slots. So you could have uh, five images and five different masks all kind of working together if you if you if you need that much. I also have some quick buttons over here for create a mask, apply a mask, or remove a mask. You could also find those in here. There's also load or save. You could just load a file um, that's your mask file or save the current mask to, to a file if you want to save it for later. But let's uh, just use this little image here as an example. I'm going to click create mask. It's going to pull up another mask creation dialog for you. Uh, you can fit the image to the preview. You can zoom in and out. What this is going to do is allow you to select areas in there for your mask. Uh, it's just freehand. You could just draw areas for your mask. You can clear your drawing. If you want to select the entire image, you could select entire image. Um, I'm going to just kind of select a blob here in the middle so it'll be easy to see in the video. There's different mask types. We have binary, which is just a black and white mask. There's a lightness mask, which will uh, pull the lightness information out of your image and make a mask with that. There's a chrominance mask, which will pull the color data and depending on the intensity of the color, make a mask for that. So that way you could mask um, just the, the colorful areas and maybe boost the color in them or desaturate them or whatever you want to do. And then I have preloaded a bunch of color masks. So if you just want a mask with the orange data within a particular region or just the green data, you can, you can apply those as well. So like a green mask is really useful if you have a, a Hubble palette you're getting started. You want to apply a green mask across the entire image and then move that green down via curves. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and click orange. Uh, there's a blur amount, how much you want the mask to be blurred. Normally 20 to 30 is perfect for all our kind of purposes, uh, but then you just click preview mask. It's gonna open um, a little window here to show you what the mask looks like. Again, you could zoom in and out and stuff. So this is just the orange data in our defined area. And then you can just click save mask it's going to ask you, do you want to save it to a slot? Or you can save it to a file here too. It's easier to just put them to slots. I'm going to put it to mask slot zero. And it saved it to mask, mask slot zero. It keeps the main window open in case you want to create other masks as well with this. So if you also wanted, I don't know, a binary mask for just that whole area in the middle, you could do that too. We're also going to save this one. We're going to save this one to... Um, slot one, and now that's in there as well. So you can close that dialog, nothing's happened yet. Now we could apply our mask to our image. So let's um, let's go over to like curves. Here's our image in curves. You could hit the mask apply button. It's gonna ask, where do you wanna apply it from? 
and uh, we could apply it from slot zero. And now it's going to give you a, a little reminder up here. We have a mask applied and it's the one from slot zero. If you don't remember what your mask from slot zero is, you could always go over there and, and look at it. So here's our mask from slot zero. And now this is applied here. So now when you go ahead and do things like adjust curves on it, you could see it's only affecting that masked region, the oranges of that particular area in there. Maybe you just want to bump up the chroma of the oranges in that particular region. That's where this mask would, would come in handy. Let's say though you want to highlight everything besides that orange in that area. If you just click invert mask, now we have the mask invert it just apply it so it refreshes the mask in here and now when you go ahead and adjust the mask it's going to affect everything but that area here I'll use brightness so it'll be easier to see so now it's protecting that masked area see it's not getting affected now so that's a, a quick way that you can have your mask, invert the mask, reapply it so you can affect different portions of your images uh, right away. Now the, I'm gonna go ahead and apply the mask from slot one. And now you can really see where, where the mask is here, right? Uh, and that's gonna just be beneficial when we show you the other areas where the, the mask is applied. So curves, masks work in curve frequency separation you won't see it on the previews here so if you go like radius like that and you want to like we'll, we'll just go ridiculous so it's easier to see and we'll do the combined now here on the combined you could see exactly where the mask was applied we're only doing this ridiculous sharpening right here in this center and then we could push for that now you can see it's 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 saved. Um, we can undo. It also works with Halo Be Gone. Uh, this isn't a stars only image, but it will only affect the masked region. And it also uh, is incorporated into our functions. So while the mask is applied, if you do things like remove green, it's only going to remove the green in that area. So let's go ahead and I'm going to remove our mask right now. I'm gonna make the image really, really green so we can um, see what's happening here. I'm gonna go ahead and apply our mask again from slot one. And now if we remove the green, you can see it only removed it in that masked region. So that's a, a way to selectively, you know, remove greens in a certain particular area. Mask also works with the histogram equalization tool so you can see that the the equalization is only happening in the masked area so that's a way to selectively uh, increase contrast in just a, a particular region masks work with morphological transformations so it's only going to affect the masked region for your morphological operation so this is going to be really good for uh, affecting just particular stars in an area. The other place it actually affects is your star add. Now I've changed uh, recombination of your stars. You get, a, you get a full dialogue now. You can select where you're getting your starless image from, your stars only image from. Uh, you could load them from files or from slots. There's blend ratios, but let's look and see how a mask can help us for uh, putting our stars back in such that we can um, Minimize the impact of the stars in the nebula region while they still are fairly prominent in the dark area of the image All right, let's use masks to help with uh, adding our stars back in so it looks uh, So it helps emphasize the nebulosity here. So we got our eagle again that we've been working on uh, I have a starless one. I, I have it in slot both zero and one I have uh, just the stars only in slot two here. So what I wanna do is make a mask. I'm gonna go ahead and create a mask. I'm gonna select the entire image. 
and I want a lightness mask. Uh, we, could, we could set a blur amount here. We'll preview the mask. Now you can see this is just kind of the, the blurry grayscale of, of the whole image, and, and that's what we're looking for here. We're going to save the mask. Uh, we can put it in mask lot zero. That's fine. Let's go ahead and, and look at that. Here's mask slot zero. Now if we invert it, you can see what it's going to do. It's going to affect everything around it if we apply it, but then in the center where it's dark, it's going to protect that area. So let's go ahead and apply the mask. And now, and now it's saying it's, a, it's applied to this image. We still have our stars in slot two here. So let's go ahead and add the stars back in. We have our starless image from slot zero. Yep. We have our stars only image in slot two. And now you can see the stars in the core here are almost, almost not even there anymore. because the, that inverted lightness mask protected the nebula in the core from the uh, screening of the stars. There's also a slider here if you wanna adjust the blend of how much stellar features get in there. So you, you, could, you could lower it way down and the stars will be really, really dim. But let's, let's go ahead and go full strength because we already had that other lightness mask on there and click apply. And here we go, we got our stars added back in we use that inverted lightness mask. Here we can show that image again. This was the inverted lightness mask we used. It protected the nebulosity from the screening of the stars and it allowed the stars in the dim regions to still come through. So it kind of can give your image some extra emphasis on the nebulosity in it because you're minimizing the emphasis of the stars in that area. And then in dim areas, you want stars because there's nothing else there. So it, it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. And that's, that's a great way to utilize masks uh, for things like star addition. A 4X palette like this, you know, if you just want to affect the, the deepest reds, let's create a mask. We'll select the entire image and we just want the reds. Now you can see the reds are all around it, but the core. So let's go ahead and save that mask. We could apply that mask now. And now when we go ahead and do things like adjust the reds, you can see that we're just brightening those reds out in the rest of the image here for that extended nebulosity. And we're not touching the core at all at this point. We could apply that curve. And now we've added a lot more red detail to the outside of this thing by utilizing that red mask. So just a lot of options with here. I tried to keep it as intuitive as possible with masks. Masks are never intuitive in any program, uh, but you do got your quick access buttons up here. You do got it down in here. Remember, you could always look at whatever masks are stored in the mask slots. I did have, you know, the warning here that tells you if a mask is applied as a nice visual aid uh, to just let you remind you because I don't have a, an overlay or anything right now. So I think this is a, a big step forward in actually doing some serious post-processing now within SETI Astro Suite. Uh, and then the geometry stuff, it, it does what it says. Uh, the invert just inverts all the image right and then you have your various geometry things you could rotate it clockwise to change the images orientation sometimes you you know you just want it oriented differently so let me know what you guys think about masks please comment like and subscribe